She goes to her friend Toy Man and takes him under the roof so they can talk in private. I'm her. The woman who saved the plane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, okay, right. Well, she took that really hard. No, of course, she comes back and she's flying, so amazingly, Toy Man believes in her. Elsewhere, a man with claws watches the news. Moving on, he goes down a secret tunnel and reveals that he's an alien named Bartox. I'd give her a ha, then a hi ya, and then a woo and I'd kick her, sir. No, that's Bartok. And he's working for someone. Bartox really hates Allura, Kara's mother. She was the one who put them all in jail, and even though Allura is dead, Bartox can take revenge on her through her daughter. Also, he was the one who sabotaged Alex's flight. And she will pay for her mother's deaths. Back at Kara's tiny little apartment, it's time for a pretty woman montage. Followed by a crime fighting montage. There's a car chase on the 112 freeway. I could do a car chase. No, 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 you're getting it wrong, DC. You're not supposed to have a character who's fighting crime and having fun. Everything has to be serious and glowering. Stop having fun! Don't really, I love this. Keep it up. And it should be fun. Being a superhero should be a lot of fun. Seriously, this is what DC needs to do to its stuff. Have a little bit of fun for crying out loud. They're superheroes. On her way to an apartment fire to help out some people, she gets crypto tranked. She wakes up bound and facing interrogation by someone. And her sister Alex is there. Part of someone. This is the DEO, the Department of Extraordinary Affairs, or in other words, they started when Superman first arrived and then Kara came, you know, 24 years later and confirmed the need for this, and so they started the thing planning for an invasion, kind of like Lex last time, which again, makes sense. Even if these two are trustworthy and reliable, they show that there's a bigger world out there and we still need to plan for the bad people in that world. The problem is that when Kara escaped from the Phantom Zone, she actually brought an entire Kryptonian prison with her. And they crash landed on Earth and got away. You know what? We'll go with Nicole Tom on this one. Oops. They've been lying low for all this time, but out of nowhere they all suddenly started committing crimes and causing trouble. The head agent, Hank Henshaw, distrusts aliens. He was also known from comics as the Cyborg Superman. I hope this comes up because this was a great storyline. They let her go, but Kara somehow feels betrayed by Alex. You know, just because they shot her with her weakness and took her hostage. Why would you feel betrayed? And now back to Just Shoot Me, the unfunny years. Cat Grant has taken upon herself to name Kara Supergirl. Kara resents the girl part, which seems to be the trend people are doing nowadays. That's the invisible girl. What about girl? your leader? In fairness, usually when we've had this character introduced, she has been a teenager. Whereas here, she's clearly an adult woman. And now a lame, lame scene involving an odious bitch. Shouldn't she be called Super Woman? I'm sorry, darling. I just can't hear you over the loud color of your cheap pants. We have passed New Uhura, the entire cast of Avatar, and we are rapidly rocketing towards umbrage levels. Didn't you say she was a hero? I'm the hero. I stuck a label on the side of this girl. I branded her. She will forever be linked to Catco, to the Tribune, to me. And what do you think is so bad about girl? Huh. I'm a girl. And your boss. And powerful. And rich. And hot. And smart. We're passing on bridge levels. She's about to fire Kara, but then Jimmy arrives with a photo, gives her credit, and saves her job. Bartox pulls a Lex Luthor and plays a signal that only a Kryptonian would be able to hear to call Kara out. Why Superman doesn't show up too is anyone's guess. On my planet, females bow before males. Uh, why do you have to keep pulling this crap episode? It's not her gender that's important, it's that she's a hero. Stop making her gender the central defining character trait. 
This fight, though, is also awesome. And they're not pulling any punches. Literally. <laughs> Bartox beats Kara and is about to kill her, but the DEO arrives and scares him away. <laughs> Alex tells Kara that her unique lineage is also making her a unique target, because Olura, her mom, was the one who locked all these people away, and now that she is gone, well, you've all seen Superman 2, you know where this goes. You will bow down before me! Both you, and then one day, your ass! Kara gives up in the face of this overwhelming alien threat, but Alex comes to her home and tries to talk her out of giving up. She admits that she was secretly jealous because she's a freaking Kryptonian. How can you compete with that? Then she gives Kara a Kryptonian recording sent by her mother. If I were Kara, I'd be a little annoyed that it's been kept from me all these years, but still, it seems enough to encourage Kara to try again. By now you have become the woman I knew you would grow up to be. And though you were sent to Earth to protect young Kal-El, your destiny is not tied to his. So what do we do now? Supergirl, also known as How Kara Got Her Groove Back. They go back to the DEO base and Alex stands up for her sister, saying that she needs to get a second chance and she can work with the DEO and be a big asset to them. Henshaw doesn't think she can do it, but figures, ah, oh, what's going to happen? Wait, you get yourself killed, no skin off my nose. And so she's off because they just found Bartox. And another good fight. Seriously, if this is going to be the norm for the show, I'm on board. More of this, please. Less of the sex in the city crap. She's not strong enough. Why? Because she's just a girl? <sighs> please cut it out with the girl power preaching and just have good characters. This is 2015. We don't think women belong only in the kitchen anymore. Stop trying to tell us they don't belong only in the kitchen. Just have her be Kara. Turns out his axe has some sort of a superheated nuclear axe that if you heat it up just a little bit more, it could blow up. As opposed to just being an axe. Stop, I, I give up. I don't want to die. Keep your mother, my God. Oh, great. Nice fake surrender, war criminal. I hate when they do things like this. Don't have your noble heroes do things that we would boo a villain for doing. No more Optimus Prime! Grant me mercy, I beg of you! But those eye beams kick ass! The axe goes boom, Bartox is beaten, and when Kara comes to arrest him, he chooses to kill himself. First he talks about how the Fallen will come and take revenge, but then he kills himself. And back again to the office. Jimmy reveals that he's known about Kara all this time and was actually sent here by Superman. So he's doing the send agents to take care of her but not actually talk to her. Superman, via Jimmy, gives her some of the same material that was his baby blanket from which his own cape was formed. That must have been one big blanket. And now National City has its own hero, Supergirl. And I'm on board with that, again. Meanwhile, we find out the identity of the evil general who's been running this secret coven of bad guys. And it's... No one can be allowed to stand against us. Not even my niece. Laura? Well, hopefully this is just from another part of the family. But I hope it's not Laura. And that's Supergirl 2015. It's kind of hard to judge at this point because it's just the pilot episode and for that matter this was an early leaked pilot and they might have very well tweaked it since then. But based on this, I'm on board. I will definitely check it out. But it could still go south. It mostly depends on whether they focus on Kara Danvers, office person, or Supergirl, title character and superhero. I certainly hope it's the latter. You can tell that they're trying to hook the female viewership by giving us all this office girl, every woman, sex in the city nonsense, but uh, last I checked, I was a chick, and I'm not buying it. I don't want to see her pick out shoes. I want to see her stop a Mack truck with her hand. And we've tried to do this before in a certain other unaired pilot that's infamous, and let's not try to revisit those mistakes, shall we? Of course Wonder Woman isn't vulgar. It's not like we should expect the world to accept her being human. So, as usual, decide for yourselves, but as for me, 
I'm definitely checking out this pilot episode, and hopefully the episodes after it. Next time, we'll do some weird little sci-fi show I haven't talked about in a long time. You might have heard of it. The premise stands upon the edge of a knife. Stray but a little, and it will suck to the ruin of DC.